Hey everybody, it's Ginger on Wheels here. Behind me, this is the Varley Eagle One electric scooter. This, this scooter goes up to 40 miles per hour, allegedly. It's got a 1000 watt motor in each wheel. It's got a 52 volt system with an 18 amp hour battery. But today we're gonna test this scooter a little bit. I'll give you my first impressions on try and translate to you what it's like to ride this thing. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's roll the intro and get ready to ride the Varley Eagle One. Like I said, it's a pretty cold day, so we're gonna go ahead and toss on the heated gloves here. And give this thing a whirl. So very springy suspension, right out of the box. I've ridden scooters like this before. I did test the Zero 10X, never published a video of it on the channel. I ended up uh, screwing up the suspension on that scooter a little bit. I went off-road, a little harder than I should have, hit a big bump, and compressed the suspension down and kind of ruined it. And this is the exact same suspension, so I know I can do that on this scooter. I'm just not gonna push it that hard off-road. Later on though, I do have a suspension upgrade sitting at my house, waiting to be installed. So we're gonna install a suspension upgrade on this thing later. But for now, let's go ahead and toss it into mode three. You can see the voltage readout here, we're at 57 volts, and 58 volts is the max for this. Let's see, what do I got? Eco mode turned on, probably. There we go. So I was saying that the Zero 10X at RevRides is $100 cheaper and it's the exact same scooter. That scooter actually has cable actuated brakes. This scooter has hydraulic brakes. So slightly different there. Okay, so the steering on the scooter. When you're facing straight, it feels kind of like it's locked into the straight position and then it goes thunk and it's, it's loose to the right and then it clicks into the middle and then it's loose to the left and it clicks into the middle. I think that's meant to reduce um, the likelihood of steering wobbles at high speeds. And it does work, but it makes it a little more annoying to ride around at lower speeds. Just maybe not annoying, just takes getting used to, that's all. It's like 35 degrees out right now, so we're gonna get even more decreased speed and range on this than we normally would. Um, we're in dual mode. I'm gonna put it in turbo mode, see how fast we go. I'll open up the Speedo app on my phone. I forgot my phone mount, but we can just use the app on the phone. Okay, so this is our speedometer. I'm gonna leave it on and put it in my pocket and then we'll check the max speed down here in the bottom left. And this is in speed mode three. It's a 52 volt system. So I'm expecting like maybe 34 miles an hour. Okay, crouching down, give this thing a little extra help. I'm about 210 pounds these days, so it could be, could be lighter. All right, I saw 53 kph on the speedo. Let's pull over here and check the speedometer that I was running. Yeah, 35 miles per hour max. Can you see that there? So 35 mile an hour top speed. Not the advertised 40 mile an hour, but I am really fat and it's cold. If you don't already own an electric scooter, then you'd be very, very surprised to find out how much the cold actually decreases top speed and range. Good 10, 20%. Maybe more if it's even colder. Cheeks are getting rosy. It is cold. I like the smooth acceleration. It's got square wave controllers with the QSS4 throttle display here, but the acceleration is very smooth on these settings. I'm starting to learn and accept that Dualtron is kind of lagging behind in that respect. They're the only scooter left that I've ridden, other than like the off-brand Chinese scooters, that still has the square wave controllers that are just on-off style. And their scooters, or Dualtron scooters, are so powerful that on-off style is not what you want with 6,000 watts. It just makes it almost impossible to ride. A little tiny tap on the throttle and it gives you all of the acceleration. Like if you hold 5% of the throttle on a square wave controller, it'll give you all of the power up to 5% of the speed, which is not what you want. But with sine wave controllers, it'll give you 5% of the power, which is what you want when you're holding 5% of the throttle. It's a lot more like a car. But this scooter and the V-Set are very smooth in the acceleration, and the Varlo Pegasus was too, I guess. So they've mapped these throttles to be more smooth off the line. This is actually quite pleasant to ride. This is a, a huge step up from the Varla Pegasus. I don't know how much the price difference is between this and the Pegasus, but the only downside I could see upgrading to this would be the uh, potential for flat tires, because you do have tubed tires with the scooter. 
The Varla Pegasus, you got those big wide flat tires just tromp over anything. I filmed that little two minute video of me just running over all sorts of shit in the parking lot. Could not do that on this scooter. That'd be flat tire city. I saw online in the Got Scooter Facebook group, there were some people saying that the Varla Eagle One got flat tires. This is really smooth suspension. I'm used to that section of the trail being quite bumpy. Other than that one problem I had with the brakes, my brake rotors were kind of warped. The scooter, other than charging it and the brakes, uh, completely set up to ride out of the box. Just gotta install the handlebars. Maybe pump up the tires. For the record, I'm rocking uh, 42 PSI on my tires right now. We're gonna see if I get any flats. I don't suspect I will, but you never know. See this section of the trail right here? This is a little scooter tip. It's really green on either side. You can tell that means it's mossy. So you don't want to take that corner with any speed or braking or acceleration. You just want to gently coast right down the middle where the least amount of moss is. Hope for the best. Because moss on these slick scooter tires is just the worst. Extra slippery. So in the winter months, there's a lot of sections that aren't even gonna get any sun and they'll start to grow moss and they'll get really slick. Sections that would normally be fine during the summer. So just cause you're used to riding around during the summer in your neighborhood, doesn't mean it's gonna be the same in the winter. Little pro tip. All right, let's go ahead and give this thing a whirl around the river where I sent my MSP into. Let's turn on the headlight here. Can't really see it that well, but it's better than the scooter headlight, which is nothing. You can hold the uh, mode button on the scooter and you do get some lights in the front, but they're just so weak sauce. Varla's having a sale right now, and I don't know if it's actually going to be going on by the time I publish this video, but they're having a sale. If you buy two of these scooters, you get 300 bucks off, which makes it even closer in price to the Varla Pegasus, which doesn't really make sense to me. The scooter is a huge step up in comfort and speed. See, do I get a horn on the scooter? No, I get a bell though, that's cool. We can practice our bell skills. Let's see what it's like. That's not bad. Might as well show you, since you're probably curious, and it's my job. I'll show you what the front headlights look like. So when you're holding the brakes, for the record, the uh, lights flash. Um, I've got the lights on right now, so when I'm not holding the brakes, the lights are on, but these are the two tail lights, just two little LEDs in the back there. And then in the front, you can see we get two LEDs in the front there too. You can't really see them at all. They don't light the way or anything like a headlight should while you're riding. It's more for so people can see your scooter so you're not invisible in the dark. But I just mounted this little aux headlight on so you, I do have a headlight. But uh, I'm 210 pounds, probably 215, maybe 220 with my gear. And if I jump on this scooter, I can't bottom out the suspension. That's unusual. Usually if I hop on a scooter under 2000 bucks and jump around, I can bottom out the suspension pretty easily. So this scooter isn't a great stair scooter. Let me show you why. If you roll down stairs with it, you can see the front swing arm assembly right here is actually pretty low to the ground. This is only about maybe six inches of clearance. And if you take a stair that, and you have any weight on the scooter, it actually pushes the bottom of the rear swing arm into the stair. So it's easy to scratch the bottom piece right here. And these uh, forks can actually break, so. Not great. If you're gonna hop stairs on the scooter, what you wanna do is pop the front tire off and just kind of send it down with only the rear tire touching the ground. The V-set is similar in build, but it has just enough clearance to make it down most sets of stairs. This is the City of Redmond. Whoop, tripping the tires. Really good brakes on this thing. City of Redmond usually has pretty good lights and stuff during winter, fun to look at. Cool art installations. So let's see what they got going on this year. Cool little things here for City Hall. Very comfortable, quiet scooter. The only noise I hear coming from it is an occasional knocking of the uh, rear suspension assembly. And it's just, it's not broken or anything. That's just the way it's built. I'll show you. So you have a swing arm here and you have a swing arm here and they're held together with a bolt at the top and a bolt in the bottom. And this suspension piece is essentially pinched together between the two swing arms. But there's a little bit of give in between the pin in the bottom and the two swing arms. So I don't know if you can hear this. That's just the pin in the bottom of the suspension knocking in between the two swing arms just a little bit because the tolerances aren't quite snug enough. But that's the only noise that comes from the scooter other than the slight whisper of the motors. So at Rev Rides, you can upgrade their 010X to a 24 amp hour model with hydraulic brakes, just like this one has. But um, I think we start to get a little more pricey, like $2,000 range with that. But for the record, if you do want a larger battery version of this scooter, you can get that in the 010X at Rev Rides. Suspension, just like the V-Set, starts to get a little squirrely at higher speeds around corners. 
if you're going around the corner at high speed, you're really putting preload on the suspension. And then when you turn out of the corner, the scooter kind of springs up and it can throw you off balance a little bit. So it's nice to have suspension with damping. Like if you can get a hydraulic or air suspension, uh, dampened suspension, that's much better. What is that? Weird little thing. No, 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 scooter man. Let's do some brake in action. Uh. Yeah, nice brakes. Zero complaints on the brakes. Or the acceleration, really. Top speed could be improved a little bit. Just a little bit too slow to ride on 35 mile an hour roads, which is where I like to cruise most of the time. Man, it got dark fast here. Just really don't like the winter time. Shout out to wrong way though. At least I don't have to ride around in the snow yet. Eastgate dude. I didn't recognize him. Nice jacket though. Turn on my headlight here. So in dual motor mode with most scooters, you can peel out the front tire. If you go zero to flat out, the front tire will spin some. This 52 volt system with my weight on it, again, about 200 pounds, um, it's about the minimum amount that you can have to spin the front tire. So not getting a lot of front tire spinning action makes it a little less fun to ride, but also good for range and good for longevity of the tire also, obviously. Let's rock the bell here. Bell works pretty nicely, gotta say. It sounds friendly, you know? It's not the Cobble Wolf Warrior horn where it's just like, F you, get out of my way. Yeah, it's just smooth and quiet. No complaints. At top speed there, I think we can expect about 11 to 15 miles of range with this 18 amp hour battery. Look how long that thing is. You can drive it from the back. It's got a separate little axle back there. Ladder 131. Suspension on this scooter is a bit tighter than the V-Set because on the V-Set around this thing at top speed, the front suspension was chattering. The front wheel was actually leaving the ground and it was going chirp, 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 chirp. But we're staying planted with this, the Varla. The Varla Eagle One. One thing this scooter could use is a more secure folding latch piece. Someone pointed out that it's only 20 bucks on Alibaba. It's included with all the Zero scooters from RevRides. The Varla Eagle does not have it though. It doesn't need it. Works fine without it, but just feels a little bit sloppy in the back and forth aspect of the uh, steering stem. Also with the rugged clamp, it's just a lot easier to clamp. This clamp takes a lot of finagling. All right, you guys, that's gonna be it for my initial impressions ride on the Varla Eagle One here. Very solid scooter, three years later. It's just a re-released 010X. Our top speed is around 35 miles an hour. We had absolutely no problems with braking. It's got really squishy suspension and tall handlebars. Let's talk about value for price. This thing is gonna be really, really hard to beat. I think it's 1,500 bucks. And when this thing first came out, it was like 2,000 bucks. So it's come down quite substantially in price and it's still just as good of a scooter. Again, the only thing I would really do to upgrade is maybe the rear suspension and a rugged clamp, but that's just really only if you really wanna off-road it hard. Out of the box, if you just need a scooter with quite high top speed, 35 miles an hour and a little bit of range, talking about 18 amp hour battery, so 11 to 15 mile range, um, this is gonna be a great option for you. 